Baby first. Click the subscribe button below. <laughs> Adventure, fun, and fantasy are waiting on the show. A story so much better with a friend than by yourself. The cover picture is a doorway to another land. So gather round and let the story take us by the hand. We're telling tales with friends, and we've got plans for you. Gaga's playing Goldilocks, this bear is peekaboo. Here's Tilly, Larry, and our Harry, great to have you all. Stories are for everyone, the young, old, big, and small. Tales and Friends. The Ugly Duckling The Ugly Duckling is played by Larry. The ducklings are played by the color crew. Mommy Duck is played by Tilly. Once upon a time, there was a family of ducks that lived in a wonderful water fountain. There was a mommy and her kids, Donnie, Deborah, Dana, and Denny. They all had beautiful fluffy yellow feathers, shiny beaks, and their quacks sounded like lovely music. Every Sunday, families would come and visit the fountain, feed the ducks, and watch their tricks. The best trick was Donnie's diving duck routine. It was a very special trick. Donnie would toss a ball into the fountain, dive under the water, and bring it back up in his beak. Everyone loved it. One day, the mommy duck had an announcement. There was going to be a new duckling joining their happy family. She pointed to the egg sitting in the nest. Soon, the egg would hatch and the duck family would have a new duckling. The ducks couldn't wait. They were so excited to see their duckling sister or brother. They waited and waited until one day, the egg finally started to crack. The duck family gathered around and got ready to clap for their beautiful new duckling. But they didn't clap. This duckling was so different. He didn't have soft yellow feathers or a shiny beak like they did, and he wasn't as gentle as they were. Instead, he was red all over with a huge beak the size of his head. And his quacking was more like a loud honk. Oh no, they didn't know what to do. The mommy duck went over to quack hello to her little baby. She didn't care if the duckling looked different. She loved him anyway and named him Dave. But Donnie, Deborah, Dana and Denny weren't so nice. They didn't like their new brother because he was so different. They didn't call him Dave. They called him the ugly duckling. They laughed at his loud honk, and they wouldn't teach him any of their tricks, especially the most famous trick of them all, Donnie's diving duck routine. One day, when the families came to the fountain, Donnie was going to perform his spectacular routine. Donnie stood at the top of the fountain and threw the ball down towards the water. But the ball didn't hit the water. It landed on the ground and bounced away. Donnie flew after it, trying to catch it in his beak but the ball kept bouncing and landed right under a big, heavy stone. Donnie tried with all his might to move the stone, but it was too heavy for him. As he struggled to free the ball, the crowd was waiting for him to return with the ball in his beak, but Donnie didn't come back. He was too embarrassed. Oh no, Donnie couldn't do his trick. Just then, the ugly duckling came running out and said he could help Donnie get the ball from under the stone. Donnie wasn't sure how he could help, but he wanted the ball back and stepped aside so the ugly duckling could try. The ugly duckling flew as fast as he could to the rock. He lowered his shoulder and pushed and pushed until he finally shoved the heavy stone off the ball. Donnie picked up the ball with his beak and returned to the fountain. The crowd let out a big cheer. After everyone stopped clapping, Donnie thanked his new brother for saving the show. He even gave him a big hug. Just then, the rest of the ducklings came over and lifted him up on their shoulders. They paraded him around the fountain. 
Suddenly, he didn't feel sad or ugly anymore. He started quacking his special quack and waving his feathers. He felt happy because everyone appreciated him, not for how he looked, but for who he was. That night, the ducks apologized and said, we're very sorry we were mean to you. Will you forgive us? We promise never to call you the ugly duckling again. Instead, we will call you Dave Duck. That sounds great, Dave Duck said as he splashed his feathers in the fountain. He felt special and loved, and they all lived happily ever after. The end. Numbers, letters, colors, and more. Dozens of games, videos, and activities are all waiting for your little one to learn and enjoy. First, the complete learning experience. Search for BF100 on the app stores. Download first. Adventure, fun, and fantasy are waiting on the show. A story's so much better with a friend than by yourself. The cover picture is a doorway to another land. So gather round and let the story take us by the hand. We're telling tales with friends. Tales and Friends Pinocchio Pinocchio is played by Harry the Bunny. Geppetto is played by Hug. The Fairy is played by Giggs. Once upon a time, there was a wondrous old woodworker named Geppetto who didn't have any children. But he wanted one so badly that he took a freshly cut piece of wood and carved a puppet that looked just like a boy. That night, he went to sleep and dreamt that his puppet would turn into a real boy and be his son. As he slept, a friendly fairy fluttered by and decided to help Geppetto. She flew over the puppet and sprinkled magic powder over its head. The next morning, while Geppetto was making breakfast, the wooden puppet began to talk. Geppetto couldn't believe it. Then the puppet began to move. It even started dancing. Geppetto was so happy that even though the puppet was made out of wood, he decided to treat him like a real boy. He named him Pinocchio and sent him to school to learn to read and write. But before Pinocchio left, Geppetto warned him to be careful. He must go right to school and then come right back home. Pinocchio smiled, said okay, and happily hopped off to school, leaving Geppetto waving at the door. On his way to school, Pinocchio saw a group of children having fun on the playground. He remembered what Geppetto had told him, go right to school and then come right home. But the kids were laughing and playing and having so much fun that Pinocchio decided to join them for just a minute. This was the first time Pinocchio ever played, and he loved it. In fact, Pinocchio was having so much fun playing that he forgot all about school. Just then, he heard a bell ring. It was school letting out. He had promised Geppetto that he'd go to school. What was he going to do? When Pinocchio got home, Geppetto was very happy to see him and asked him how his first day at school went. Pinocchio was too embarrassed, so he lied and said that it went great. Right at that moment, Pinocchio's nose grew longer. 
But Geppetto was so excited that he didn't notice that Pinocchio's nose was growing. Instead, he ran off to his workshop to make Pinocchio a brand new wooden pencil box to take to school the next day. Do you like your teacher? Geppetto asked as he started working. Yes, I do, said Pinocchio, lying again. And just like before, his nose grew even more. Pinocchio didn't understand what was happening. Could his nose be growing because he was lying? He went to the mirror, and when he saw his long nose, he started to cry. Geppetto heard the crying and came immediately. What happened? he asked. Something is wrong with my nose, sobbed Pinocchio. Geppetto looked closer and saw Pinocchio's long nose. Don't worry, said Geppetto and hugged Pinocchio. I will help you and everything will be all right. Pinocchio saw how much his father cared for him and was ashamed that he didn't tell him the truth. In a quiet voice, Pinocchio admitted that he was lying and didn't go to school. As he told the truth, his nose got smaller and smaller until it was back to its original size. Geppetto wiped the tears from Pinocchio's cheeks and thanked him for telling the truth. A sparkling ray of light came through the window and the fairy appeared. She said that because Pinocchio decided to tell the truth, he had earned the right to become a real boy. The fairy waved her wand and in a burst of magical dust, transformed Pinocchio into a real live boy. Pinocchio looked down at his arms and legs and saw they were no longer wood. Geppetto couldn't believe his eyes. He finally had a real boy for a son. Geppetto jumped to his feet, and together with Pinocchio, they started dancing and singing. Even the fairy joined in. From that day on, Pinocchio always told the truth, and he and Geppetto lived happily ever after. The End of games, videos, and activities are all waiting for your little one to learn and enjoy. First, the complete learning experience. Search for BF100 on the app stores. Download first. Adventure, fun, and fantasy are waiting on the shelf. A story so much better with a friend than by yourself. The cover picture is a doorway to another land. So gather round and let the story take us by the hand. We're telling tales with friends, and we've got plans for you. Gaga's playing Goldilocks, this bear is peekaboo. Here's Tilly, Larry, and our Harry. Great to have you all. Tales and Friends The Emperor's New Clothes The Emperor is played by Hug The Crooked Tailor is played by Al The Knight is played by Harry the Bunny And the Children are played by Goo Goo and Gaga Once upon a time, there was an Emperor who cared only about what people thought of him and how he looked he didn't care about being a good man or a wise king. One day, a crooked tailor came to the castle and told the emperor about a special new fabric he had invented. This fabric is so special, said the tailor, that only smart people like you can see it. The crooked tailor then pretended to take out something from his bag and raised his hands as if he was holding something proudly. Isn't this shirt beautiful? The crooked tailor asked. 
The emperor couldn't see any shirt at all, but didn't want the tailor to think he wasn't smart, so he pretended that he could see it. As the smartest emperor in the world, I pronounce this the most beautiful fabric I've ever seen. The emperor gave the crooked tailor a big box of gold and told him to make a whole new wardrobe of clothes using this special fabric. The tailor took the gold and got to work pretending to make the emperor new clothes. Every day, the emperor would look in on the tailor and see him sitting at his loom, hard at work making invisible clothes. The emperor then called his most important knight to his chamber. Everyone knows I'm the smartest emperor in the world, he said. So obviously I can see these clothes. But can you? he asked. The knight looked hard at the crooked tailor's hands, but couldn't see any clothes at all. Not wanting the king to think he wasn't smart, the knight lied and said, As the smartest knight in the world, I think these are the most beautiful clothes I've ever seen. The king wanted everyone to see how smart he was, so he made a royal proclamation. I shall hold a parade through the kingdom for all of you to see my special new clothes. The parade day has come. By now, everyone knew that only smart people could supposedly see the clothes. So nobody wanted other people to think they weren't smart, and therefore they pretended to see that the king was wearing beautiful clothes, even though he was just in his underpants. As most of the crowd cheered for the emperor and his clothes, a shout was heard. The emperor has no clothes! It was a child who clearly saw the emperor wasn't wearing anything but his underpants. The child shouted again. The emperor has no clothes! There was a hush in the crowd, and everyone looked at the boy. They didn't know what to do. Another child stood up and said, Yeah, the emperor has no clothes. Then another child said it. And another. And then some adults joined them. Soon, everyone was shouting that the emperor wasn't wearing any clothes. The emperor tried to convince the people that they were wrong, but it was too late. Everyone had learned the truth. He wasn't wearing any clothes, only his underwear. So he covered himself with his hands and ran away in embarrassment. That day, the whole kingdom learned an important lesson from that little boy. And that lesson is that while it's important to listen to others, you should trust your own opinion and speak up when you know something or someone is doing something wrong. The End Baby first, click the subscribe button below. <laughs>